up music lovers and welcome back to the woodshed. I've had a lot of comments, emails, and messages regarding my song The Hardest Goodbye. That song is uh, a nice little ballad from my album Caught Between the Truth and the Lie. A lot of you guys have been emailing me about it. That song was inspired by guys like Jeff Beck, Andy Timmons, Dave Gilmore, all these guys that leave all this space in their playing. They say a lot with a very simple melody. We as guitar players get caught up in playing as many notes and as many licks and as many things as we can do. Sometimes we lose track of how to make a simple melody and be impactful to the listener. So this week on The Woodshed, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to improve your playing when you've got a simple, simple melody and you just want it to have more character and have more emotion. If you're interested in a full breakdown of The Hardest Goodbye and we go way in depth, be sure to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash music. Over the next couple of days, I'll be uh, breaking down not only the main melodies and stuff, but the, some of the flashier stuff that happens at the very end of the climax of the tune. This lesson, however, is all about one-note melodies, two-note melodies at tops, that, that, that you need some character and some textural things with your guitar in your hands to make those melodies really pop. Let's get into it. Now, typically when we as guitar players, so it's time to play the guitar, we sit down and start playing all our favorite pet licks. Cool, that's great. Compositionally, musically, sometimes that's not what's needed. Sometimes a song just needs one note. This song uh, starts, the song is in G minor, and it starts on the fifth. The melody's built around the fifth. <laughs> That's the melody. There's not a lot there. The notes are, are simply five, then uh, six, five, three, four, right? And I'm thinking of all of that out of G minor. So how do you make that sound cool and not just play this? That sounds really square, right? How do you get that love on the note? Uh, trick number one is ghost noting into the actual note that you play. That can be a combination of left hand techniques. Let's try it with just sliding in, but instead of just sliding into the note like this, it's hard to even not do it. There's a rake at the front, right? That, that's actually happening on the front of the note. I'm not just playing this. That sounds a bit empty, check this out just with a little bit of stuff on the front of the note and then adding the vibrato controlling the, the vibrato speed right let me say that one more time so it doesn't sound like I have a mouthful of marbles controlling the vibrato speed Vibrato speed isn't just a thing that you shake the string at, you know. Combine that with a little bit of rake on the front. Now, all of a sudden, that note speaks a little bit more, right? There's more on the note. Now, uh, step two of that would be using your fingers. It's almost like a slide player, right? The way they kind of grab strings as they hit the string that's intended. Right now, the third string is the one that's intended with the fifth on it, which is right here. It's a D note. But I'm trying to hear all of this low end stuff. You can do it with the pick and it sounds different. It's more aggressive, right? It's got more, uh, like, uh, more teeth on the note. Right? Okay. Trick number two is actually the guitar itself, the controls on the guitar, right? Um, one of the things that I've learned from being in the, the Sir family is I've learned a lot of behind the scenes kind of uh, rumors and mythos about the mighty Mike Landau. And Mike uh, will set up a lot of his rig based on the, the volume control not being maxed out, right? Don't max out the volume control. Uh, sweet spot is around se uh, six or seven on a strat. Check it out, maxed out. Now, check it out around six or seven. I still have all the sustain without 
the 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 compression and the signal of the pick hitting really hard, but I can still hit the guitar hard. <laughs> play the same kind of licks with it maxed out. So it's cool, right, that before and after the same kind of lick was delivered with a different flavor on it, right? And you don't have to play more notes to get something to echo uh, and resonate with the listener. Tip number three, chord tones, right? This is always in everything, the intervallic structure, the chord tones, and not just playing around a shape. Uh, by that, I mean playing around your pentatonic box blindly. Looking in that box, let's take this and look at all the different versions of the same note that we have, right? Is right there. Right there, okay? And they all have a different color. Now with the volume up. Right? Open strings. See, I didn't go with that when I wrote it because that sounds like something that maybe started a Dream Theater song. Kind of sounds like some train of thought era dream theater kind of intro. So the same intervals, right? The same melody and the same notes can be delivered across different points of the guitar and have a completely different uh, reaction to the listener and you as the player. That is super, super valuable in my opinion. And I think it's super commonly overlooked. Uh, we as guitar players love to put things right where we know they are and constantly go to that one spot to play them versus really inspecting what they sound like across different parts, different parts of the neck of the guitar. This next tip is an extension of what we just talked about, and that's arpeggiation. Arpeggiating through uh, to give a lift to a melody. Let's say I'm trying to get to this melody again. Let's just say I'm trying to get there. I can lead into it by arpeggiating through this G minor, check it out. Kind of stacking that G minor sound. And then kind of going Steve Vai for a second with these fifths. And the last little tip that I'm going to give you this week is uh, the idea of the double bend, right? This is a reminiscent uh, David Gilmore, again with Jeff Beck, where you take a note, you're going to bend up to the note, you're going to release the note, move your hand to a different part of the neck, bend it up again, okay? Uh, a lot of modern neo-soul guys are kind of hip to this. Mateus made it... Uh, really relevant via Instagram and all of his internet powers and his fabulous playing, right? Uh, I hear it, when I, even when I hear Mateus do it, I hear Mateus doing it as a throwback to some of those guys from the 70s, uh, specifically like Dave Gilmore, right? Um, and this kind of sound. That thing. So what I'm doing there, let's take a G minor. That's like a G minor out of nine, but let's just take G minor right there. Everybody see your rock and roll G? Here's root. Now I'm gonna focus on getting to the third in a cooler way versus just going. Instead of just playing it like that, I'm gonna bend up to it and then I'm gonna release my finger down and I'm gonna slide up. And now my next note is my other chord tone, which is the fifth, one, three, five, right? The Van Halen thing. I'm gonna focus on those chord tones and I'm gonna go bend to three. While it's at release, I'm gonna slide all the way up and then now I'm gonna target this fifth. And you can see how 
like uh, emotional that type of, of, of uh, technique can be, especially to a listener when you got them kind of hanging on every little eggshell of a of, of hand movement that you got going on. This thing can really draw in a listener. <laughs> And even that kind of move, where you're kind of, you're wanting to stay on this note without going, without just playing the same note over and over again, right? You're kind of putting little inflection on it. Right? And again, with that one little bend move, there's the three, release, up to the five kind of a sweet trick to, to navigate your tonal ecstasy. Okay, and finally, just because you asked for it, here is how I played uh, the intro on the record. What you saw me do was use a capo. On the record and live, I play the intro like this. When I had Uncle Ben playing guitar with me, uh, shout out to Uncle Ben, he thought that I recorded it with a capo. And then when I saw him doing it, I was like, why didn't I record that with a capo? It becomes so open and bell-like, I wish the album had been recorded with a capo. But without the capo, it's all built around this G minor seven kind of sound, right? So I'm playing... And then I'm just dropping it. I'm actually just moving the root around. Right? So here's the first shape. Four middle strings. And then drop the root down. And then play your bass note, which is D. And then E flat. And then as you play this E flat, you're gonna switch your fingers. The reason I felt like it was valuable to teach you this is because it gets you used to switching your fingers while holding other chord tones down. Um, it's one of those things that kind of, with this lesson of subtlety, uh, guys that have been playing for 20, 30 years, like myself, uh, it, we take that for granted, right? And if you're just kind of navigating your way out of one genre into maybe a more melodic genre like this. Like maybe you've been in a kind of a Skinner thing, or maybe you've been in a metal kind of environment and you're wanting, you're interested in this kind of playing for whatever reason, Mateus or Jeff Beck or, or Dave Gilmore, whoever. And uh, I think some of these little subtleties go unmentioned. And I'm not saying that I'm the only guy that's ever thought to put this in a YouTube video because I know I'm probably not. But as far as I'm aware, a lot of this stuff goes unmentioned and never talked about. So I thought it would be very valuable to show you uh, essentially a, a walking bass line against some chord tones and how the fingers have to move at the same time while these other fingers are holding something else down, right? So uh, it's a good little exercise uh, to, to get used to that. And obviously I think it's pretty because it's the intro to my song, Hardest Goodbye. Um, I'm going to link in uh, a little hot section of uh, the Hardest Goodbye at the very end where these arpeggios happen. full breakdown of the song, jump over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Andy Wood Music, and then I will go through all the other chord changes and how I play over those chord changes throughout the song. So in closing, you can see that there's several little tools here that you can add to your playing that I use that, that can make one note melody lines and really simple melody lines 
have more character and more texture. And like I said, obviously moving uh, two fingers around through a chord shape while holding other fingers down and it's something that's not natural like this, you know, that's super valuable too. Uh, I hope you dug this. I know it's a little like off the beaten path and it's not so uh, clickbaity and, and, and over the top on like, hey, look at all this shred stuff. But I have had enough emails and messages to feel like I, this belongs on the woodshed. So let me know in the comments if this is the kind of stuff you want to see. Let me know in the comments if this is the kind of content you like and if this is the type of thing that you're into. Um, let me also know what you want to see on the woodshed. Any guests that you'd like to have uh, in, in the woodshed that you'd love to see maybe on a, on a Zoom interview or something like that. And if you're looking for the exact uh, Hardest Goodbye transcriptions and breakdowns, you can grab all that on patreon.com slash Andy Wood Music.